Hello together. My name is Joachim Schleicher from PILS. And I'd like to continue the FTP outcomes session with our trajectory generation for MoveIt. So we are targeting industrial applications with ROS. Traditionally, uh, ROS was born and grown up in uh, research projects and has all such fancy path planning and stochastic uh, motion planning for manipulators in there, in, inside ROS, but sometimes you want to just place a part precisely at one position in such a machine. In such an industrial context, we want to have reproducible path planning, and that's the content of our FTP. So we want to do direct motions in joint space or in Cartesian space. We name it PTP for point-to-point -point movement in direct joint space, linear movements, and we also support circular movements. And you see in, in this video uh, what it looks like. So you see the Arvis GUI. Arvis is probably well known. And you can move the robot around there. You have a graphical user interface where you can drag and drop the robot. And with our command planner, you can choose point-to-point -point or linear, as I said. And once you place your robot at the position, it does not matter if you move the virtual or the real robot. It moves to that position so the planner directly has a, has a comfortable interface. And uh, as another step, we target at programming with Python API so that the user can write his programs. And another target is at tutorials so that we have a good learning curve and have a good starting point for system integrators that want to use robots with ROS in industrial applications right now. It's written robot independent, so you can, work, uh, you can use it with every robot out there that has a working move it config and just need to set the planning pipeline to use our planner manager. To go into more technical details, so what's that? So you start with Arvis or, as I said, a Python API from the user interface. And then you send your go to the move group that has many plugins for inverse kinematics, for joint limits, for the environment model, and we use all those existing capabilities and just write a planner plugin that comes into play for the trajectory generation. And the result is a trajectory that has at every time step, the joint angles of the robot manipulator. So it's just a sequence of individual, cut, uh, individual joint positions that is then sent to the robot for execution. Um, also, within the MoveIt framework, so there's some, yeah, nice overall picture that you uh, can do also condition checking in here. So the environment model is respected, not in the case as for traditional or as for uh, research motion planners or um, OMPL like motion planners, but in our case just to check if there is a collision and if the resulting path that is deterministic would result in a collision is just not executed. So we check for collisions and we check the trajectory if there would be a collision to give the user a uh, the chance to either use another planner or to uh, wait for the user to interact. But with this setup, you get deterministic and reproducible results. The velocity profiles are trapezoidal, like you see in the top picture. So the velocity adheres to the joint limits while the fastest axis just uh, moves with the fa fastest speed or with the speed override you specify. And the other joints are just uh, scaled to fit, the, uh, the, to fit the duration of the trajectory. 
that's standard in industrial robot controllers. But now we also have this in ROS, so you can use these capabilities. The linear command is essentially the same, so you use Cartesian limits in there that we have brought into a movie container to plan with it. An additional feature is trajectory blending. So if you have multiple linear or point-to-point -point sequences, uh, you can combine them together. And once your robot reaches the target within a specific radius, uh, the planner is allowed to deviate from the path and already target the next goal. And once it leaves this radius, it's back on the original linear movement again. So that's also a standard feature of industrial motion. The Python API for programming the robot, you can use RV, so you can use any joint controlled teacher interface, but f in the end you want to have a program where the user can uh, have multiple positions and has its maybe a state machine or behavior tree or, or whatever uh, sequence that he wants his application to move. And from our side, the API is as simple as instantiating a robot and writing r.move to command move it with the appropriate goals. And you can specify poses in joint or Cartesian space in here. You can also use the uh, TF frames that ROS offers to, to drive relative uh, to, for example, the TCP in this case. So for, for a pick uh, sequence, you want the robot to move in the TCP frame, most probably to, to move uh, along the set axis of the gripper in this example. And in addition, we have pause and continue services implemented in the API so that you could have a master SPS or a master graphical user interface where the user can say, stop, I want to pause the program, and then continue and just resume from that position on the same linear reproducible path so that you, you have your uh, user interface in a transparent way. We did this all within Rosin, and Carlos mentioned Rosin is about quality, so we also focused on documentation, we focused on tutorials, and we have everything up uh, on wiki.rost.org. There are tutorials already linked. There are the code API of the different packages linked in there. And another point of quality is testing. So we set up unit tests and integration tests on different levels from the easiest parameter validation checks up to whole system integration checks where we launch the, all the nodes and do fake executions. Everything integrated in Travis and uh, the Ross Industrial CI. We targeted 100% code coverage. We have reached milestone two of the Ross in FTP and for the part that is within this milestone two, uh, we already reached this code coverage. For the last part, the blending part to come, we have the same target to achieve this code coverage and to have all Travis checks passing so that the user gets high quality code and we have, an, uh, from a developer's perspective, we have an easier maintenance of the code in the future. What experiences did we have with uh, Rosin? It was overall a very good collaboration. We got good mentoring. Uh, it was direct uh, connections to the maintainers. So we had World Movie Day, for example, where we uh, participated and many helpful community uh, talks during Roscon, for example. Things where we should improve as a whole Ross industrial community, I think, uh, are core packages that maybe could get unmaintained during the ROS1 to ROS2 migration. 
So that's, I think, a joint effort where we should put uh, focus that there are no central packages that then are missing for industrial applications. And versioning did cost us some time. You always have to do a full upget update and update, uh, upget upgrade once you install a newer version of a package because you don't have any ABI compatibility in ROS. And that's not written in a central point in documentation. It's just uh, a thing you have to know. And I think uh, restriction we should in the future uh, try to work around and give, at least for the core packages, some guarantees so that uh, the user can update packages more easily or at least doesn't get any sec faults if one doesn't do so. Thanks for this uh, support for this project and any questions? Hello, I have two questions. First would be well, if you can explain what what is actually motivation to develop trajectory planner as I assume that uh, provider of robots like KUKA, IBB and so has their own planners already available. This is first. And the second question would be which type of kinematics do you support or are supported within this package? Thank you. Um, starting with the second question first. So the kinematics is done by the Movid Ica plugin structure. So everything that has a, an inverse kinematic solver that is registered uh, should work. We tested it with uh, several six and seven axis kinematics manipulators, uh, so that's about the kinematics. Um, yes, robot manufacturers do have each and every one their own uh, planners for, for those commands, but in our opinion it should be possible to co combine them with those stochastic uh, motion planners that Ross offers, and to have a unique interface I think an integration is necessary. So the advantage for us is to have a unique interface, one message type that you send, I want to go to this position and go with whatever planner you like so that you can easily exchange the different algorithms in a transparent way. Okay. Other questions? I saw, also saw you, James. Hi. Uh, how would you ensure path reproducibility in this case? You you spoke about reproducing the same path. How yes. do you ensure that? Because the existing path planners for six or seven degrees of freedom robots are all probabilistic based. They are not uh, based on inverse kinematics. Like they are not uh, a closed form solution. Okay, if the kinematics does not give you uh, reproducible results, it it won't be reproducible any longer. That's that's true. But if you have an IK solver, so for our six degree of freedom robot, we use IK fast, which gives reproducible IK solutions. And you could do that for a seven uh, degrees of freedom robot as well, I think. So you would have to uh, do some, yeah, you have to choose this one additional parameter in a deterministic way, and then you get deterministic trajectories. Is it, is it okay? And I have uh, one last question from Dave. Uh, just a question on the technical side. How do you prevent joint flips, especially with like a seven DOF arm, if, if it reaches a limit or a null space and pops? Is, is there a check in that? Yeah, we check the joint limit. So this is joint velocity as well as joint position. And if the IK solution is without the joint limits, the planner just refuses to plan. So it gives an error code and says joint limit violated. So in the six degrees of freedom, we cannot do anything about such IK flips 
for a seven degree of freedom, you could work around this with some uh, tweaking the, the additional parameter. But still, once you limit the, uh, violate the joint limits, you just don't get a solution. That's, of course, a limitation in a way that you, can't, you cannot guarantee that you always get a linear movement, uh, especially in singularities. But at least it's reproducible. <laughs> okay. Um, so much for your talk. Thank you very much, Joachim. Uh, there's always a coffee break.